Hey guys and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Today we are going to be talking about artifacts. I'm going to be explaining every single artifact set in the game for you and just primarily how they work and who they go for. Now I'm not going to explain every single unit obviously but just a general description of every uh, artifact. And once you pick your artifact set I will also show you what to do with main stats and substats. And with that out of the way let's get right in the video. One important tip before you guys start farming artifact dungeons is that you shouldn't be doing it until you're level 45 so you can guarantee the legendary piece. Now once you have the legendary piece and you're level 45, you can start looking at sets like the Thundering Fury and the Witch of Flame for specific characters. But before that, you're going to be getting Sojnor Instructor, uh, Exile from just normal chests and bosses around the map. Uh, for example, like world bosses and weeklies, you'll be able to get gladiator and such. Now, once you are level 45, you're going to be looking at these sets. So, for example, Thundering Fury, Thunder Thuther. Uh, just a basic electro damage dealer is going to be using these sets. I primarily go for the Thundering Fury. It is a lot better just overall. It boosts your electro damage and decreases your critical. I mean, not critical, your cooldown time and your reaction damage. The Thunder through there, the whole point of it is just to give you a bunch of electro damage only to those affected by electro. And this is kind of buggy as of now because if you guys have electro on an enemy and you put fire, sometimes fire just completely overtakes electro and electro isn't even on the enemy anymore. It lasts like two seconds. So. It's definitely an interesting piece. I'd say the safer option is just to go Thundering Fury and maybe experiment with Thunder through there in the future. All right, so for the Maiden Beloved set, you want to primarily be looking at this set for every healer that you have. Uh, this can be used on Barbara, uh, Chi Chi, you can even put it on Jean. Uh, some characters like Chi Chi do scale off attack, so it'll be better if you do two piece maiden and then two piece gladiator. For Barbara, she scales off HP, so you can just go ahead and use the whole thing. But yeah, definitely if you have a healer, take a look at Maiden Beloved. All right, and now for the very decent Venera. Obviously, you want to be looking at this for every Animo dealer, and if they do utilize Swirl, aka Venti. You want to be going for the four piece. You can also do this with Sucrose as well. Basically, any animal user that uses Swirl, you want to be going for the four piece. And if they only use Animal, you want to go for the two piece and maybe Gladiator, Wanderer's Troop, whatever, right? Now, the next artifact dungeon we have are the Fire ones. Now, the Crimson Witch of Flame is the two piece is going to boost Pyro damage by 15%. And the same thing as the Thundering Fury is going to boost elemental reactions, but only for these particular elements and a different amount for each one. And now, the interesting part about this one is using an elemental skill increases two piece effect by 50%. For this reason, it actually can't work on every fire damage dealer. So for Klee or like Jengling or maybe some other heroes that I haven't tested, you probably just want to go for this set right here because it does increase damage against Pyro by 35%. And this is just like a base stat. It doesn't change. Unlike this one where it fluctuates depending on your E ability. All right, this set right here I actually have zero experience with. I have not built a single GU character yet. But I have heard that this set actually only increases damage by the character that puts the shield. So, for example, if Noelle puts, uh, gives a shield to herself, only she gets the damage. Not everybody in your uh, party that has the shield. So this is probably not the best set, but you can experiment with it. Uh, this one is probably going to be your number one choice for a Geo DPS character. Uh, so probably Ningguang or Zhongli in the future. Uh, you can also just do the two-piece Geo and then switch to something else. That's probably what I'm going to be using. Uh, you can also do go for the four-piece if you want to invest in it. But uh, Geo sets are definitely interesting. Uh, there's going to be a lot more experimenting with these sets to fully utilize them. But for now, I say just go with a safe bet and uh, build this piece right here and ignore this one. 
All right, so once you've done all of that and you found the set that you want to pick, next comes out is main stats and uh, substats on all your pieces. For example, my Kaching is being built critical rate, critical damage as of now, and her artifacts are going to be based around that. For example, this uh, flower is always going to be HP main stat, so that's what you're going to be going for. Critical rate, critical damage, this has to be one of uh, the main things you focus on since the flower and the feather are actually always based so you can focus on the substats as much as you can. So I got my critical rate, critical damage, I got very lucky with these as well because they're actually very useful for Kaching. Now we go for the feather, same, same deal. And then for the hourglass, you probably want to go, um, you have to actually go attack on this one. Now you don't want to be stacking attack on everything because attack is important, but if you put too much of it, it becomes less important. So a good rule of thumb is 2000 attack or maybe around 1800. It's not really a big deal. Just don't go 3000 attack. That's going to hurt you. So obviously you want to be going critical rate, critical damage. I didn't get too lucky with it, but I did get energy recharge. And she, since she does have, uh, I believe she, her elemental burst is 40. Yeah, so she's going to be getting her ultimate every two seconds. So which is really, really good for Kaching. And um, the next piece, as I said before, you want to be going the element, the element that the hero uses, you want to be putting that on the cup. So the Luke will be going Pyro, Kaching, Electro, Sucrose, Enemo, and so on. And obviously you want to be going uh, Critical Rate, Critical Damage as well. Same substats for everything. But since the cup is a lot harder to get the particular element for, you're going to be doing something like this until you get like AR50 or something. Because uh, this is all about luck. So if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you're going to be running crappy substats for a while. Now for the hat, you want to be running critical rate, critical damage. As you can see, all my plus 20 hats are critical rate, critical damage for every unit that I have. Uh, obviously for uh, heroes like Venti, you don't want to be doing this because uh, your swirl doesn't critical. But for pretty much everybody else, you want to be going critical rate or critical damage depending on what substats they need. For the Luke, as you see, I have critical damage because when you awaken the Luke, you get critical rate. So you don't really need much critical rate since his base critical rate is very high. Uh, but that pretty much explains everything. Uh, if you guys do have any questions, I know artifacts is a very like complicated topic. So make sure you guys ask me all the questions you have about artifacts in the comments. I will make sure to answer every single one if I can. And as always, YouTube tells me to do this. Uh, press like on the video if you did enjoy it. Also sub to the channel if you want more Genshin Impact related stuff. But that is going to be it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed and peace.